PPP, vote GPP, vote the G. Pleasure to be with you in your living rooms. I look forward to having a conversation with you. Uh, do call in on our program. We'll be discussing many issues Today I have with me uh, one of our top advisors on economic development, especially in the, the youth future of our country, uh, Chidaram Ramdial. He's a, a senior accounts auditor at one of the uh, accounting firms, senior accounting firms in Guyana. Welcome. Thank you for uh, joining me. Thank you, Peter. I know it's tax season, and um, you're busy doing lots of corporation taxes, individual taxes. I mean, what, what are you sensing just at this time of the year? Well, it's, it's a good thing you got me out because I made my job this <laughs> evening. I had to take some time to come here. Um, but in terms of the, the sense you're getting is that uh, a lot of the, you know, the clients are thinking that, you know, there's a lot of tax that, you know, we, we have to pay, you know. Uh, if you look at the tax rate, I mean, only recently it was reduced, but whether the reduction is enough in order to... Um, give rise to you know disposable income and income to reinvest. So you know, about like corporate corporate tax, for example, if yeah. at, at forty percent. Yeah, well, it's now forty yes. percent. It was it's forty five percent. Some companies pay as much as sixty uh, percent um, tax. If you look at it, because you're looking at some foreign investors probably paying forty five percent tax, corporation tax, and then another fifteen percent uh, withholding tax. Uh, foreign investors, that's like 60% tax. So. But, you know, the, the ordinary citizen, as, as we travel around the country, talks more about the VAT. Yeah. You know, the corporate boys have their problems to deal with. So this 16% VAT that, you know, I say is a noose around our neck, I mean, how does it now translate from this corporate tax to this ordinary man having to pay the 16%? Well, you see, VAT is a regressive tax, which means that the poor pays more in relation to their to their income level, you know, rather than the, the richer folks or the higher level income folks, and that is why in some countries, um, when they introduce VAT, they reduce the the income tax that the lower level earners will pay. Mm -hmm. You know, they reduce it so that they will have more disposable income. They will not feel the effect of the VAT. Um, one of the thing that um, we are propelling is to increase the tax threshold from 35,000 to 75,000. And that is what is needed in terms of um, when, they, when fat is being introduced. Um, if you look at the recent uh, increase that we had from 35 to 40,000 now, yeah. um, it's a 5,000, but really and truly it's not 5,000. It's really uh, $1,667. At the rate of inflation, I mean, the cost of living has gone up significantly. Look at the price right. of gas. Uh, yeah, today. you know, uh, so the proposal we are making from 35 to 75, that's giving you additional um, over 13,000 extra, um, which will, you know, propel in terms of the, the cushion effect of, of the VAT. Um, and if you look at 75,000 um, tax-free pay for low income earner, I mean, um, that does not seem to be enough, but I mean, for now, um, you know, we start there because if you look at the the cost, the cost. But, of but President Jagdio was so excited to tell the nation that he increased the tax threshold from what thirty five to forty thousand. Yeah, but let's let's. Look but at but it doesn't, as you said, doesn't make a difference. Let's, let's look yeah. at an ordinary man, you know, living who probably doesn't own a, a house, paying rent, or probably let's say they have a low income house, they have to pay mortgage. You pay a mortgage, then after paying mortgage, what is left there for you to buy your ration? Then if you have children going to school and the transportation cost is going up, I mean, think about it. You know, it it's, doesn't really seem to be enough. 
you know, it really need that cushion and, and to be higher than, than what is being proposed. And you, you're a young professional on our team, and you have done your degree and you've gone into the, the professional circles of, but you look at some of the UG students coming out now. What about our underemployment or unemployment? How is that affecting jobs even where you work? Well, that's an interesting point there because, um, and if you look at, let's, let's, uh, let's stay a bit on, on the VAT. Um, VAT is, is one of the tax that government tend to introduce when, in order to get as a, a main source of revenue mm -hmm. when uh, the other sources of revenue uh, is not adequate. Uh, for example, in some developing countries where there are uh, low or a lot, a high level of unemployment mm -hmm. and low per capita income, mm -hmm. um, government introduced the VAT as a main revenue source because the, the tax earned from the other sources are low, yeah, and and that's that's a typical case in our country here where we have a, a high level of um, unemployment, mm -hmm. um, and not only the unemployment, the other thing is the underemployment. Um, there's a high level of unemployment, but there's a high level of persons who are employed, but uh, are being employed not at a, a relevant salary, or you know what I should say is a good salary for the qualification. Um, you know the pay they are getting uh, is not adequate, and that's for one of the reasons we are seeing a lot of young professional migrating. You know. Um, going for better salaries, and even if they have to um, do lower level jobs. Yeah, and I, I, you know. I ran into a teacher uh, that left us in New York um, last week when I was in the United States, and he was a certified teacher in Guyana, making 60,000, uh, that's 300 US. And I had this ambition to teach and you know do good for Guyana, and he's overseas now as, as a security guard, making $4,000. A month, right? From three hundred US to four thousand US, yeah. and he said, "I don't, I don't care about teaching anymore. At least right. I can buy a car and pay a mortgage and all those things." I am, um, you know, um, unemployment among the youths, I, I think, is really high because, and I'm, I'm making this judgment on the basis sometimes when we put out um, ads there for a clerk, clerk position, um, the quantum of application we will get for that clerk position. And not only the quantum in terms mm -hmm. of the, the qualification you see um, youths having applying for those clerk jobs. You know, it's amazing. You know, somebody with a diploma from UG applying for a, a clerk job because they, they're not getting a job. Um, I was talking to a student of mine, and you know, he said, um, Mr. Ramdiel, I'm finding it hard to get a job everywhere I go. Um, they're telling me that um, they need people with experience, but they won't give me the opportunity to get the experience. So how would I get the experience? How, how would I ever find a job? But is it easy to find a job as a young person coming out of university or, or CXCs? Do you have to know the system well, or? The, the feedback I'm getting, yeah. like when I ask, you know, how come you um, end up working at, at a particular forum, you know, the feedback I get is that, you know, the, the person who who get the employment, they have to know somebody or somebody who know the person um, to get the employment. And uh, it seems like that's the way we're going. You have to know somebody. What happens to somebody who don't know anybody? Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like... But, uh, you know, our, our blueprint really talks about reduction of taxes as a whole right. that you describe. But we also talk about creation of, of opportunities. I mean, how, how would you then translate it to the young professional or the young people out there in how we will create new opportunities using the ta current tax system, reducing the, those services, but producing a new, new, new quantum leap. Yeah, one of the things I look at is the level of unemployment as we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And in, in my mind, the unemployment is surrounding the youths. A lot of youths who are unemployed. And um, the way I see it is that by increasing the by increasing the disposable income to 75,000, people will have more disposable income. They will be a higher level of savings. Um, some people could afford to go into small business. Um, the parents could help the children get into a small business, and you know it 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 can create self-employment for the youth. You know by simply starting a little business with a little bit of disposable income, start a small shop mm -hmm. or a, a small garden or you know something. 
Um, the other thing that we are planning to do is to reduce the cooperation tax level. Um, at the moment, we're proposing reducing it to 25%. By doing that, it means that companies will have more income available to them or more of their profit available to them to reinvest. Now, reinvestment comes also in terms of expansion. Mm -hmm. A company expands, it means that they create employment. And as I was talking earlier in terms of the, the some of the, the investors having to pay high level of, of tax, withholding tax and so on, um, if that is also reduced, then it encourages more foreign investment and as such create employment. You see, one of the focal things I, I think we, um, that any government should be mm -hmm. focusing on is employment. Because there could be so much repercussion from, from unemployment. Yeah. You know, crime also could be as a result of mm -hmm. unemployment. You know, because it, it's hard that somebody can't get money to buy, you know, the daily things that they need, you know, yeah. the, the, the needs, much less in terms of, you know, buying things that they will want, right? But, you know, the excitement here, in, as you describe our plan, in layman terms, for, for those who are listening, in, re, in, in increasing this tax threshold to 75000 so a teacher making $60,000 really don't have to pay any taxes right. because it's below the poverty the, line. The problem, yeah. But today the government announced a 5% increase for teachers. Does that really make any difference? Wouldn't I rather have that tax threshold to 75000 than a 5% increase? In the no, what does the numbers drive? Yeah, the 75000 definitely is higher than the 5% the, uh, the the increase. It's working out in terms of numbers. Moving to 75000 that's that's 13000 and more, more in terms of increase. Um, you look at, let's say some, somebody is working for $100,000. A 5% increase really means $5,000. You see? Removing to 75, you have yes. 13000 and more yes. uh, uh, disposable income, additional income to spend. Moving in terms of 5%, $100,000 salary person, only get $5,000 yeah. additional. And, and what is interesting, and I mean, I'm very blunt on this television program. You know, I'm running for the presidency of our, our country, and, you know, you on our team advocating for for these changes and I've said it before the presidential candidate of, of the ruling party said he plans to sustain the standards of living so you're saying if you sustain the standards of living at the 35 40 thousand tax threshold a five percent increase to teachers you really would not increase our ability to take care of our families tomorrow exactly as, as a young professional, you know, I, I would like to hear from these presidential hopefuls, I mean, all the presidential hopefuls, uh, a positive message. Um, what would you do to make a difference? Make a difference, not to sustain, mm -hmm. but to make a difference. In, increase the standard of living. Not to sustain the standard of living, but increase it. Um, a radically increase yeah, it. I mean, because we are proposing a transformation where you're turning your raw materials into value-added products. You're looking to turn into a transport economy, lead no. economy, energy-driven lead economy. All those things have right. to happen. And that excitement has to be in the air. Because right. if, I'm, if I'm a young person, I want to know that I'm going to have a job tomorrow. Not an ordinary job at a clerk yeah, wages. And, and not only yeah. a job, but also it's important for us to mention standard of living. Yes. You know, uh, it's very important, you know, there's a difference between cost of living and standard of living, you know. Um, when, when we look at it, we, we want to harness the potential of this country mm -hmm. that you improve the standard of living so that Guyanese overseas could come back, come back, invest in the country. Young professional like myself would want to stay in this country to develop it rather than to go into other country. You know, that's the way I see in terms of this country moving forward. You know, we have to keep the young, the young generation here. Yeah. I mean, the young generation is the future. You know, um, governments around the world now is focusing on the younger generation. They, it, you know, they realize that the younger generation is the future. Yeah. And as such, they have to listen to the, the voices of the younger people. And, and why, why did you make a decision to get involved this time to make those changes yourself as a young professional? You know, um, 
I always like Guyana. Um, my heart is in Guyana. Um, I never wanted to go and live out of Guyana because I've, I've seen the potential mm -hmm. that Guyana have. And I see that there is an opportunity for Guyana to have a good standard of living that you could enjoy, your family could enjoy. Um, even in terms of education, I see Guyana have the potential to increase the level of mm -hmm. education that no longer children have to go overseas to get Better, qualification. Yeah. You know, they could stay right in Guyana and access this qualification. I mean, that has become a reality to somewhat due to technology because you could go online and do your MBA and so on yeah. um, due to technology. But I want to see more of that, you know, um, available in Guyana. You know, you could stay right in Guyana and do your law degree. You could, you know, yeah. you know which I have a passion for. I want to go and, and do a law degree, but then I have a family. Um, if I have to go and spend a couple of years overseas to do my law degree, then, you know, that's affect my family life too, you know. Let's go back to a comment you made earlier on the corporate tax. Right now, corporate tax is at 40%, which is extremely high for any investor. As a business person, I mean, coming back to Guyana and, and having to pay 40% corporate tax, profit tax, is ridiculous. But if you, as you said, we propose we reduce profit tax to 25%, ultimately to 10%, that will create you said more income for the companies right. to reinvest and expand their business. Right. But does it also increase the quality? How, how, how would companies then use that money to, to, bet, to better their company, but not make the profit for themselves, but create job opportunities and quality jobs for us? Right. Well, once you start to expand, there will be a higher need for um, the labor force, you know, high, higher need for employees. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, there will be not only for ordinary employees, but higher level employees, because management level will mm -hmm. expand and so on. And the company at that point will want to spend more in terms of keeping these employees. Yeah. Now, when they want, want to spend more to keep them, it means that that's a competition by itself that keeps the salary level rising and providing um, employees at different level with comfortable salary scale yeah. that they could live a, a, um, a high. So suddenly we start getting a middle class Right. You know, I've always said to the low carbon strategy, for example, Norway is one of the richest countries in the world. Right. They're the, one of the largest ship builders. You know, and I've mentioned to the president many times, I even wrote him a letter, says, why take this cheap money, this $50 million, and give it away when it doesn't create new opportunities for us? Right. Why not ask Norway to build ships right here in Guyana? Right. Now, you would want to go to university and get a mechanical degree or an engineering degree, right. whatever shipping, to get a better job. And right. if you build that ship here, so Norway, instead of telling them, don't, don't cut our trees down, right. take $50 million and ask me where it goes, I don't know, build a ship right here in our country. Right. Give create us jobs. Right. Yeah, create create employment. Yeah, create employment. Well, I mean, it, 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 is, it is a component that we've got to, to focus on is how do we excite young people? That, as you said, which is very impressive, that you want to be in Guyana. And I think a lot of young people realize they want to be in Guyana. They only want to leave because they're looking for that opportunity. Yes. And for those parents looking out there, if you have an 18-year-old or 22-year-old, you have to decide their future or a 15-year-old or 12-year-old. If you continue to vote the system to sustain the way we are, we're not going to make that difference for your children. Right. We've got to figure out how to change the system. We've got to break it and give it a chance. And it's the opportune time to make that difference. Yeah. You know, um, I, I think in my mind, this is the right time to make the difference. You know, make a difference. Just think of it. Let's see how we can make a difference. You know, um, once we once you start to vote towards making a difference or look towards making a difference, then it will trans transform. Guyana into a beautiful place. And in one of our economic plans, we talk a lot about the road to Brazil, you know, what that would do to, in trading, yeah. uh, the other opportunities that exist that comes with, with deep water harbors and ethanol plants. And, but when you look at what we're seeing in the system, I mean, I use the term sustain, I don't see, if, if Guyana continues the way it is, 
I don't see you surviving five years from now unless something happens radically and we're not seeing some of those plans. And that's why I believe I'm excited when people like you get involved because at the end of the day, you're creating your future. Right. And those watching out there, this is not about the politicians. No, it's about you creating it's your you future. It's yeah. you creating your future. Let's take a phone call whilst we are uh, discussing here. Yes, you're on the air. Hello? Uh, yes, you're on the air? Yeah, good evening. Good evening, how are you? I'm good, I'm listening to you guys. Yes, speak up there for me. Yeah, a long time I want to talk to you, Mr. Peter Ramsero. It's an interesting topic you guys are tonight. Yet in it, together we will, and of course that's true. The taxes in this country is a big problem. Look at it, for one way. Like you said, the teachers make $60,000. Mm -hmm. They pay taxes there. Then when they go to the supermarket, they pay taxes again. And at the end of the year, they get no tax return. Yeah, and, it, and we don't even have tax credit for families. So yeah. if you're a single person, you're paying the same level of taxes as a family of four. If you're a family of four, or if, if you have somebody, you know, dependent upon you, or some, you know, old folks are dependent upon you, you, you know, you're paying the same tax. How can you support those people adequately? Yeah, so, so you're saying, um, sir, that, that definitely the tax around us is stifling us. You know, we, we ought to be creating... And not only stifling us, we're not creating jobs. Yes. I could give you three ways now that we could, if you get the presidency, where we could create jobs. We need a vibrant public transportation service. In yes. And we have proposed, like, for example, public transportation for school children as a start. Yeah. And, you know, you look at the light rail system, you know, along the East Coast, along the East Bank, yeah. publicly run, those things will, again, create ways and means of, of getting to the workplace. But one thing I want to interject, you know, while we're listening to the caller also, is we've got to start looking at, at other industries in other areas. Like, for example, Linden needs to become back the manufacturing hub. Yeah. You know, Bartica, um, Perica, Wakenham. Those are all areas that we have to put localized jobs and industries. Not everybody come to the city right. looking for that. One more thing. Yes, sir. We have a lot of clay in this country. What the claimic factory we had? Yes, I mean, and those are all things that has to be rebuilt. Glass, refrigeration, manufacturing. You got to bring energy costs down. That's why we're saying, even to um, the the current system, instead of giving laptops out right now, why don't we invest in solar panels and create jobs? And that will then reduce energy costs. It will bring some more money back in your pocket. The tax system will be reduced. So I will have more money now to go and invest and maybe become a, a new entrepreneur. Thank you for your call, appreciate it. Um, but but uh, the caller talked a lot about, the, again, the tax system, the news, the stifling. You you described that very eloquently in, in what needs to change. But, but how do we get involved now in creating this change? You know, we can preach all we want, saying the tax should be to 8%, 10%. But you saw the numbers. If the government collected 60% more revenues than they wanted, they said they wanted extra revenues to run the country with VAT. They collected 60% more over the last three, four years. Mm -hmm. What should they do with that money? Well, that's, that's an interesting point you make there that, that I was thinking about a minute ago. Um, you know, since VAT was introduced, uh, you always hear the Revenue Authority reporting mm -hmm. that they have collected more than, you know, they have budgeted Budget, to collect. Yes. You know, and, and that's that's a, a that's an indication there, and to show that they could reduce the, or sorry, increase in this case, reduce the, the tax in terms of lower mm -hmm. lower income by increasing the threshold. Right? But but why why no? I I mean I asked the president this, and I've asked even the minister of finance, why don't we take care of our people? I mean, I'm running for presidency of, of this country because I believe there's the needs for change. You're involved because there needs for change. But these folks have been in power and, and in rulership versus servant for 20 years. Don't you think they would want to give their families back money so that we all can have a better life? Why stifle all of us at the same time? Because some of them are more wealthy than others, maybe. Well, again, you got to do the level of income. Yes. And, yeah. and, and probably... Um, 
their level of income is within that comfortable range. Yeah. But as you said, we've got to have a positive message. Uh, yes, yeah, you're on here. We have to have a positive message that that we all believe um, in Guyana and how do we make it better? Because right. the past doesn't matter. Right. Yeah, how do we make it better? Yes, yeah, you're on the air. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, we think we have, got to, we, we have to have a change of government. You have, we have to have a change in government. And, and the necessary change, why do you believe there's a necessary change in government? Okay. Um, necessary change? Because we work working hard and we can't get it. And, you know, our, our young advisor, professional advisor here, uh, talks a lot about the tax system and how by reducing certain tax levels, increasing revenues in other areas, creating incentives for companies to have uh, expand their operations, will create that environment you're looking for. So the plan has to be very comprehensive, and you have to do it in phases. I mean, I mentioned in, uh, on previous program, you don't build the airport at Wakenham before you ensure there's energy, there is production facilities, there's factories, then you build the airport to get the goods out. But you build the airport first, and then there's no money to invest in the other things. So the people in Wakenham have a beautiful airport, mm -hmm. But they can't afford to even fly. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't make no sense that you could make, build a big airport and we have no. Yes. Yes. But but thanks for your call. I think your message well taken. Okay. Thanks. Um, but as we get close to, to wrapping up, I mean, how again, we as as the citizens of our country, reviewing where we're at today, listening to the frustration as we travel around the country, our families, um, what is it going to, we have to have in us to make this change? But it's not change for change's sake. If those things you're saying is not done, it would be no use. Right. Well, it, it's all come, uh, all come to the day uh, of voting, you know, where if you really want to make that change, then that's the day, you know. Um, make a change. Give somebody else a try. I mean, what's there to lose, you know? Um, why not give us a try? Um, I don't think we could carry it worse than it is. With our, our ideas and the way we're thinking, it's definitely forward-looking. Um, you know, so the day of polling day, then that's, that's the day that, you know, all those persons out there who wants to make a change, and think that there need to be a change, then that's the day that you are to make the real decision. That's, do the, it. that's the day of the decision. To yeah. Do it. Let's take one last phone call and we'll wrap up. Yes, you're on the air. Hi, Mr. Ramsaro. Yes, sir. I'm enjoying your program. Um, I, I like your vision. Um, but you see, I mean, I, I want to, I mean, my young guest here t today, I, you know, what excites me as you, you talk about me is the fact that. You know, a lot of us, I may look a little young, but, uh, you know, I'm, I am old. But when you see <laughs> individuals like Mr. Randy Al here, a young professional, excited about his country and our country, that should excite you. Well, I am holding in my hands here hope for our nation. Yes. Diana Vision 2020. Yes. Peter R. Ramsarup, MBA. Yes. Oh, my son, since, since this book has been, um, yes, you know, my son owned this book. And this uh -huh. very intelligent boy. I'm a Negro. He has this book in his library with your photograph uh -huh. facing. So I all of your vision tonight um, to talk about the glass factory. Mm -hmm. from, you know, long I'm saying this thing. If, if anybody's going to campaign for the presidency of this country, we are having youngsters came from school yes about 20 years 18 years with a lot of subjects some of them get 12 subjects blah, and, blah. and they're not okay yes you but know. your point well taken i think i think you talk about hope for our nation yeah. and uh, we have to wrap up here thank you hope for our nation you've got hope because you say you want to stay here in this country I and make it, better. make it better I, I want an opportunity to make it better you know and that's what the, what the voters have to realize that you know give the person a chance who wants to make it better and we want to make it better we together to make i mean better. the caller his son yeah. wants to make it better and, and I, there, I, I there are a lot of persons yeah. out there want to make yeah. it better but come that day that's the day when we're going to say yes we want to make it better what would you tell a young person coming out of university or 
doing their CXEs uh, in what two weeks? What 